to dance with me. And while we were dancing, she says, uh, you, want, you want to go riding after this, you know, after this party's over? Okay, I left her with her head still laying in the water, her half her body in the underwater, and uh, her thighs and legs on the bank. Got her out of the car, pulled her out, and drug her into the ropes. I turned her loose, and she fell into it face down. What makes someone's life valuable? For the past two weeks, I've sat patiently waiting at my desk, fingers interlaced, mulling this question around in my head. It echoes in my brain like water droplets taking a deep plunge into the voids of a cavern. How do we as humans value life? For some, it may be easy to say that all life is valuable. Most would say that those who take it need to have some kind of castigation or punishment for their actions. And yet, some institutions value the lives of others so little that the very same people that they're sworn to protect could disappear without a trace, leaving them completely indifferent. Today I want to tell you a story. A story of one man, a vile man who most would call the evilest man alive, America's most prolific serial killer, a man by the name of Samuel Little, whose revolting actions put a spotlight on one of the most disgusting practices done by certain police systems today. The story of Samuel Little begins on June 7th of 1940 in Reynolds, Georgia. His mother was supposedly a prostitute who was unable to adequately care for him by herself. Little and his mother both moved into his grandmother's house in Lorena, Ohio shortly after he was born. He had major behavioral problems in school and at the age of 16 was convicted of breaking and entering in Omaha, Nebraska. In his late 20s, he and his mother moved to Florida, where he began to travel a lot more. However, the more trips he took, the bigger his rap sheet got. He was arrested in eight states for a slew of crimes including DUI, fraud, theft, aggravated assault on a police officer, armed robbery, and By 1975, he had spent a fair amount of time in prison and had been arrested 26 times in 11 different states. During his time away from jail though, he would constantly be looking to pick up women. Most, if not all of them, happened to be African American women he would pick up from what he referred to as the ghettos. They were usually prostitutes or homeless women that he would always manage to talk into his vehicle by being flirtatious or offering something as simple as a ride or drugs. And when he eventually managed to get them in his car, he would go for the throat. One of the few times this method would actually fall short would be in the case of Pamela K. Smith, a woman with a known heroin addiction who managed to get away after Little had attempted to kill her. Police managed to find Little still in his car, stating, I only beat her. Miraculously, he was arrested and put in prison for only three months. He was also put to trial for the murder of Patricia Ann Mount, a woman with a mental disability who had been found strangled. Even though he had been identified as dancing with her the night of her murder, he was acquitted due to what the judge labeled weak evidence. Now, as I would go through each and every one of these victims, I began to notice a major pattern and a disturbing truth to the police system in each of these cases. Most of these people were never linked or identified to Samuel Little, not because of a lack of evidence, but because of a lack of care and drive by the police. These people weren't considered important to the police in the slightest, because they were from the ghettos and rough neighborhoods. They considered them deplorable, 
Not even human. What's worse is that there's a term for it. They were considered the less dead. The less dead is a term coined in the crime world to refer to vulnerable and marginalized murder victims in society. This term is typically used in cases regarding prostitutes, vagrants, people in the LGBTQ community, and even the elderly, specifically women. The disturbing reason this name even exists is because the cases are considered as if the people never existed in the first place. Since many of them saw these people and treated them like they were less alive because of how their lives were, they virtually never existed to people, whether they were alive or dead. And there's something about reading that out loud that just genuinely makes me sad. The thought in my head hearing these words just leave my lips, it's almost animalistic. And it's an unfortunate reality that still even happens to this day. And these are the targets that most serial killers stalk and hunt. Samuel Little would eventually be arrested in 2012 and extradited to California for a narcotics charge. Using DNA testing, they linked him to three more victims. Carol Eileen Elford, Guadalupe Duarte Abodaca, and Audrey Nelson. All were found dead in the streets of Los Angeles. This opened the floodgates, and eventually, Little's victim's count is suspected to be about 93 women. He ended the lives of almost a hundred women, and no one batted an eye until 2012. The signs were all around there, and there were times where he was even caught in the act of driving around his strangled victim. No one thought to connect the dots, all because he waited in the wings, and went after what he perceived as easy targets. From 2018 to 2020, he admitted to the aforementioned 93 murders with only about 60 of them being confirmed so far. His last confession was for a murder that had taken place in Florida where a man had been wrongfully convicted. During each of these confessions, he appeared to show no remorse and even smiled while discussing his actions with the unidentified victims. In one interview, he even spoke about how he no longer feared death or judgment. I live in my head now, with my babies and my drawings. And of course, in stereotypical serial killer fashion, he would refer to his unfortunate victims as his babies. His reminiscing was cut short after his last confession. He died on December 30th, 2020, after complications due to diabetes in his heart. As Samuel Little's story closes though, one thing remains. How do we eliminate the concept of the last dead? Unfortunately, I think it may always be a problem. The most important thing is to remember that those who may be perceived less by society are just as human, same as you and me. And by treating them as human, I think that alone goes a long way. We should not forget those in less fortunate positions than ourselves, or treat them as if they're some kind of rabid animals. With mental health being a constant battle and the world melting down over constant clashes between monetary classes, I only ask that you remember one thing from this video. No matter where you come from, no matter where you've been, and no matter where you go, you will always be human. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing to see the next upload. Remember that you're loved and I look forward to broadcasting to your screens again next time. Sleep tight.